Following this week's passing of former WWE star Shad Gaspard, who was pulled under by a rip current off a Los Angeles beach, the wrestling industry has been hit by yet another tragic death. Top stardom wrestler Hannah Kimura has passed away aged just 22. The All Women's Japanese promotion confirmed the news on Twitter. Stardom fans, we are very sorry to report that our Hanaka Mora has passed away. Please be respectful and allow some time for things to process and keep your thoughts and prayers with her family and friends. We appreciate your support during this difficult time. Former stardom wrestler Io Shirai tweeted on hearing the news, no more sadness, I still can't believe it and I still can't take it. And Ring of Honor's Session Moth Martina, who had also wrestled for the promotion, posted, heartbroken. Kimura's professional wrestling career technically began when she was only eight years old, briefly winning DDT's comedy belt, the Iron Man Heavy Metalweight Championship, before losing it moments later to her mother, the now retired Joshi wrestler Kyoko Kimura. She properly debuted in 2016 for Wrestle One, where she worked her way up various Japanese promotions, culminating in New Japan's first ever women's match at Wrestle Kingdom 14 in January this year via a stardom special dark tag. But it wasn't just her passing at age 22 with an incredibly promising career in front of her that makes Kimura's death so tragic. It's also the events that built up to it. In addition to her wrestling career, Kimura was also a cast member on the latest series of Netflix's Japanese reality show, Terrace House. In one scene filmed back in January, she became angry and slapped one of the housemates when they accidentally shrunk the wrestling gear she wore for Wrestle Kingdom in the wash. This led to some viewers turning on her, sending her messages to leave the show and die. Then yesterday, before news was was announced of her passing, Kimura's Twitter account posted a string of graphic, since deleted tweets, some showing images of self-harm and reading, nearly a hundred frank opinions every day. I couldn't deny that I was hurt, I'm dead. Thank you for giving me a mother. It was a life I wanted to be loved. Thank you to everyone who supported me. I love it. I'm weak. I'm sorry. I don't want to be a human anymore. It was a life I wanted to be loved. Thank you everyone. I love you. Bye. It's just yet another awful reminder that what people tweet or comment or post has very real consequences. Don't bring people down. Support each other. Rest in peace, Hannah Kimura. And rest in peace, Shad Gaspard. More than 500 fans and wrestlers attended a beach memorial for him last night, including his former tag team partner JTG, Kofi Kingston, John Morrison, Taya Valkyrie, Shelton Benjamin, Dolph Ziggler, PJ Black, Joey Ryan, and more. A GoFundMe has been launched in Shad's memory, which will help the Gaspard family with bills and expenses, and will also contribute to the college fund of Shad's son, Aya, which has gotten off to a very good start, with AEW owner Tony Khan personally donating an incredible $10,000. You can donate too by clicking the link in the video description below. Thank you for your support on Patreon, the Snapdragon King, Ryo Ondonte. In more escapist kayfabe news, and God knows we need it, last night's Smackdown show saw the shock trade of top Raw star AJ Styles to the house he built. Friday Night Smackdown. It's renovation time! Shortly after Styles beat Shinsuke Nakamura to move on in the Intercontinental Championship Tournament, WWE announced breaking news! AJ Styles has been traded to Smackdown for future considerations. Which begs the question, what are the rules? What are the rules? Two weeks ago on Raw, WWE announced their new brand-to-brand -brand invitational Don't Call It Wildcard Clause, which has already led to such ratings grabbing matches as Baron Corbin in the main event of Raw and Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair everywhere. The specifics of the rule, as Michael Cole explained, are simple. Each superstar will be able to appear on their opposite brand up to four times a year, but not on NXT, as it's only to do with Raw and SmackDown, meaning Charlotte Flair was on SmackDown as a Raw star, not NXT champion. And the women's tag team champions can float anyway, but they might have used one of their four appearances up on last week's episode of Raw. Whack bat. WWE don't really know what they're doing. Ratings are down almost 25% across the board, and the promotion 
is making panic moves to turn them around. So now they've suddenly announced AJ is officially joining the SmackDown roster in more of a draft trade move, which will allow Raw to pick a blue brand wrestler in return at a future date. Going by last October's botched draft, it'll be Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross again. WWE haven't yet held their usual post-WrestleMania superstar shakeup, instead opting to just let a bunch of people go. And reading between the lines, it seems AJ to SmackDown is to replace Roman Reigns as the promotion's top star, as he'll presumably be out of action for a long time, as he doesn't want to endanger his newly born twins. While we here at WrestleTalk have been told there is no heat whatsoever on Reigns for refusing to work during the pandemic, as part of WWE Zero Consequences, title of your pay-per-view rule for those who feel uncomfortable attending tapings, ain't that right, Sami Zayn? Conan says that he's heard on his Keeping It 100 podcast that there is unhappiness with Roman backstage. I know for a fact, because I was told this by people in the dressing room, that he does have heat for missing WrestleMania, which to me, it's ridiculous. Now you want to bury him when you don't have that many guys that are over? That's why it's hard to watch the product. Before we get on with the SmackDown review in about four minutes, it's time to hear from this episode's sponsor, us. The new issue of WrestleTalk magazine is now available in select stores and in print and digital form at WrestleTalkMag.com. Our lead story covers WWE's mass Black Wednesday firings and the events that surrounded them in one of the wildest weeks in WWE history. In constructive criticism, we take an in-depth look at WWE's problems and look to provide some solutions. All of that, plus Adam Blompier, empty arena matches, our retro section and plenty more. Support Wrestling Print Media by ordering via the link below or go on better and subscribe. SmackDown kicked off with the dirt sheet, where Miz and Morrison made some unfunny jokes about rejected Bray Wyatt puppets, but noting Wyatt still prefers them over Braun Strowman. This brought out these hands, making Morrison weirdly angry at him and challenging Braun to a match on Miz's behalf, because the SmackDown tag division was starting to show a bit of life. Quick, squash it, Braun, squash it! Strowman quickly beat Miz with a power slam, so Morrison then challenged Braun to a handicap match with him and Miz at Backlash for the Universal title. This is a lazy filler feud for your brand's top title on pay-per-view and seems more to be about sowing tension between Miz and Morrison, which the hacker might expose eventually, if he or she ever decides to do anything of note again. Also, Braun lost his Intercontinental title in a handicap match just the other month, so accepting another one with the Money in the Bank briefcase in play was pretty dumb on his part. AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura had a great TV match in the Intercontinental Championship tournament next, where AJ hit a phenomenal forearm so good it drafted him to Friday nights. Styles will be facing Elias in the semis, which means we might be getting an AJ versus Daniel Bryan final. Bailey told Sasha Banks not to be at ringside for her match against Charlotte next. Some more double act tension that the hacker could exploit soon. They can get off Fortnite long enough. Bailey versus the Omniflare got loads of time and was all the better for it, with Bailey eventually winning with a roll up while holding the ropes, which Charlotte sold by smiling and not looking all that bothered. Way to build up that triple threat for the NXT Women's Championship at Takeover in your house. Sasha and Bailey celebrated backstage while teasing even more tension. Hacker person, you you really you really gonna want to look into this. Eventually. Sonya Deville and Dolph Ziggler versus Mandy Rose and Otis was a fun match after that, which gave Sonya and Otis plenty of spots to stand out. Sonya won with presumably her new finisher, the knee to the back of the head, much like Adam Cole's last shot, and Dolph super kicked Otis after the match was over. This feud will hopefully continue, as there's plenty more to do with all these character dynamics. We got another decent backstage promo from. Ah. Ah, damn it, damn it. Uh, but what's her name again? It's like absent-minded brotherhood. Boys of anarchy. Damn it. 
I can never remember these guys' names. And then Jeff Hardy spoke backstage about his journey to the IC title and it being the first singles title he ever won. This was a pretty good promo and built nicely to his main event tournament match against Sheamus, which told a decent, if not slightly overdone story on this episode, but Sheamus was a little too cocky before Hardy won with a shock roll-up. This means we're getting Hardy versus Brian in the semi-finals, where Sheamus will most likely interfere and cost Hardy the match. Forgotten Sons! Forgotten Sons. I'm gonna make a note of that. So that was SmackDown. Let me know what you thought of the show by leaving a comment down below because I'll be replying to people from out of quarantine. This was a decent enough episode, but it's weird for a show that contains Styles versus Nakamura to feel like it's just plodding along. Compared with Raw, Friday's stories just don't have the same exciting hook. There's plenty of long-term tension building, but it feels like nothing much ever actually happens. This week's Smackdown is smack bang in the middle. What are the 10 best AEW matches so far? Watch Adam Blompier's latest list video to find out by clicking the video on the right ahead of Double or Nothing Tonight, which Luke and Laurie are live streaming their reactions for. And has Money in the Bank ever made any new top stars? Click the video below that for the debate and make WrestleTalk.com your homepage for all the latest wrestling news and get your issue of the WrestleTalk magazine by going to WrestleTalkMag.com. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was wrestling.